I'm going to talk about one thing in the next seven minutes that we have, which is business models as a tool for success. And it's really about a tool. And I'm going to run you through that in the little time that we have. So I'm going to make three points. That's it. Three, three points in these seven minutes. First one, let's get started with a time machine. Let's travel back, travel back to 1958, 1959. Do you know who this is? Probably not. It's Chester Carlson. And Chester Carlson is known for having invented the first modern photocopying machine. Now, why would I be showing this at an event like E-Day? The reason is very simple then. When Xerox invented this machine, it was great technology, but it was too expensive to bring to the market. So they asked consultants, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We can't sell this, it's too expensive. Consultants said, too expensive, shelf it. Don't go to the market. Well, they insisted. And what they did is, they went to go look for a business model to bring the photocopying machine to the market. So what did they do? Instead of selling the machine, because it was too expensive, they leased it to companies, and they said, you lease it, you get X thousand copies for free, but if you photocopy more, so if you photocopy 11,000 times instead of 10,000 times, you pay per copy. You know what happened? Of course, you know the story. People made thousands of photocopies, and Xerox became one of the biggest companies in the world. Now, let's move on with the time machine. Fast forward. Let's move to 1997. Now, you know these two guys, of course. They're famous for Google. Now, Google was not too expensive when they came to the market. It was too cheap. It was for free. So what did they have to do? They had to find the right business model to earn money and to survive with this free product. And the rest of the story, you know, contextualized advertising auctioned off over the web, and now they're the richest web company in the world. Now, I could go on with the time machine and ask ourselves, what's the business model today? Is it Facebook? They don't have the right business model. Hoe kunnen we dat oplossen dan met de FTP? Is it Twitter? They don't have a business model. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on with the point I want to make. What do these two examples and, uh, have in common? And how do we do that? Straightforward. They have a great business model, and the business model trumps technology, or enables technology. So they have great technology, but they needed a great business model to actually succeed and become big. So let's go to point two. Now, I showed you that business models are important. Now we have to find out, well, how do we think about business models? As a startup, as a big company, how do I think about innovative business models? Well, I'll give you a tool to do that. It's called the Business Model Canvas. Very simple. It's a tool with nine building blocks that allows you to describe, analyze business models, and then come up with great business models. How does this work? So it's about nine building blocks, customer segments. Every business model has a customer. Once you know the customers, you decide what are we going to offer them? What are, what are the problems we're going to solve? Once you know what you offer, to whom you offer it, well, how are we going to reach them? What are the, chan what are the channels? The web, mobile, stores? Once we know how we reach them, we think about the relationships. Are we talking about mass customization? Are we talking about personalized relationships? And then what are people willing to pay for? Right? Revenue models, important topic for both examples that we saw before. Specific revenue models. And then we know, OK, this is the value we create. We know for whom we're doing it. So how are we going to do it? So we look at the left side of this business model canvas. What are the key resources that we need? What are the assets? Do we need servers? Do we need a great brand? Do we need great people, developers, to do that? Or is it something completely different? Then we ask ourselves, so what are the activities that we need to perform? Are we doing marketing? Or are we just maintaining servers? What is it that we really do? And since we're in the 21st century and we're on the web, we do more and more collaboration. So we think about the key partners. And once we know those points on the left-hand side, we know what the cost structure is. So why do I show you this? Because on one piece of paper, you have all the elements of a business model, and it would help you think through the business model. So here's the concept. Now let me turn that into a tool. So let's take away the clutter, overlay it with a canvas, and now you have a beautiful structure to start structuring your thinking about business models. And then all you do is you put up post-its, you think through your existing business model, new ones, and it helps you think it through. 
And you need this if you want to come up with great business models. Okay, point two. We need this type of language to think through business models. It's not ad hoc anymore. We have to be structured about this, systematic. Let me get to the last point, see if I can get it through in two minutes. The last point is, okay, we have a tool. How do we use it? What do we do with that canvas? Well, we plot it out on a poster. We have this poster, we put it on the wall, and as a group of people, as diverse of, as possible, we think through business models with post-it notes. Now, the point is that we shouldn't stop with one option. We should think through multiple business models. So we have one, but that might not be the right one. Remember Xerox? The consultants told them you can't sell it. Well, that's only one business model. We need to generate options, as many as possible, as much as we can. We need to think hard and take time for that. We never take time for that, for thinking through the options. And then, only, we choose the one that seems best. You know who works like that? People like him. In the Dutch culture, you have a good architectural culture. This is an architect, Frank Gehry. Now, before he actually builds things like this, like the Guggenheim Museum, you know what he does? He takes the time to think through options. He makes models, he makes sketches, he goes on, more models, hundreds of study models, different scales, different types, until he reaches the right conclusion and thinks, okay, this is the way we're going to go. And that's my third conclusion. That's the way we need to think when we think about business models in startups or big companies, same thing, but we need to be systematic about it. We need to prototype these business models. Okay, I made these three points. If you haven't got enough, we wrote this down in a book. You can get the free stuff online because I think this business model topic is more important than ever before and it's something that you should do systematically. It's something for which you should take time to think it through to come up with the best op option. So, I don't know how the timing is. We don't see the watch here. Let me go down. Yeah. So, still yes. got 1 minute 30. Let me go on. So, whoop. we need this design attitude to think through business models. Now, what's the big problem? The big problem is we think we have the right solution and we go on. Now, we need to step back. Is it? Yeah, yeah you have 30 seconds. Okay. Go. We need to step back and we need to use tools that help us generate different alternatives and only then we should go for the right solution. And just for the last word, you can see big companies starting to do this uh -huh. and they're struggling with that because it's a completely different environment, mm -hmm. notably through the web. So let me stop there. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Alexander. Mm -hmm. They can reach you via the web. I saw. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Email. Good. Twitter.